Good morning. It's lovely to see you, and increasing numbers every week, it's, it's just great. So thank you for coming, and thank you for those joining us on the live stream on YouTube, uh, on Facebook. It's lovely to have you with us too, and please remember us in your prayers as, as we do you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Eastertide. Uh, we had an image last week which we needed really to unpack because it was culturally and chronologically distant from our own experience, that of the Good Shepherd. This is a, 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 another challenging image that Jesus uses, but it's one that's probably quite accessible to us uh, in, in a different way. We all have similar experiences in our own life, so uh, we look out for that image and we give thanks for the enlightenment that the gospel gives us about the nature of the presence of the Lord and his invitation to us, his disciples. That we might celebrate worthily, we call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Eastern mystery within us that those you are pleased to make new in baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go round with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off there to Sarsus, Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up living in the fear of the Lord and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. You, Lord, you, Lord, are my praise. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All the families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust. And my soul shall live for him, my children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his faithfulness to people yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. 
you, Lord, are my praise. In the great assembly, you, Lord, you, Lord, are my praise. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are the children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence, whatever accusations it may raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, If we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another, as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it yield even more. You are pruned already by means of the word I have spoken to you. So make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me with me in him bears fruit in plenty, but cut off from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown onto the fire and they are burnt. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and you will get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The 25th of April is not a particularly significant date in Scotland. Um, In the church calendar, it's the Feast of St. Mark, so it has an importance to us, the the, the, the author of the first of the Gospels that we have. But um, in, in Italy, particularly in Rome, it's celebrated as one, one of the major festivals of the year. It's Liberation Day. It's the day in which the city of Rome was liberated from the Nazi occupation. And it's celebrated with a public holiday which is religiously observed. Everything closes down and the armed forces have a, a parade along one of the major, very ancient streets, the, 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 the street that runs through the Imperial Forum, um, and all the significant dignitaries are there on, on the, the bleachers to watch the, the march past. And uh, actually, as you go north from Rome, each of the little towns and villages has, in the days and weeks subsequent to the 25th of April, their own anniversary of liberation. But 
the fact that Rome, the capital, was liberated without a shot being fired um, on the 25th of April was a, a cause of great feasting and rejoicing. You, you probably know the history that the German, the Nazi occupation, realised the, the enormous uh, cultural and patrimony of, of, of the treasures of Rome and decided that it would not be good to destroy it in fighting. And all the fighting took place to the south of Rome, as you may know, because you may have uh, relatives involved in it, in, in Anzio, in the Tunnel, and Monte Cassino, where the peninsula of Italy is, is narrow with a large mountain range in the middle, so the invading troops were confined to the coastal strip, um, and, and many, many, many thousands of them died um, in bombardments. But they broke through, um, and they entered Rome, uh, a solitary American jeep, actually, uh, and it drove around Rome unbelievingly because there was no resistance um, and they were able to communicate that the city was, was free and was liberated subsequently. So one of the great things is that it's a, a public holiday which comes at a lovely time uh, in the year, in, in the late spring, just as summer's beginning to beckon um, and a bit like a day like today, it's, it's warmer uh, uh, each day and, and brighter and sunnier. And the, the Italians have a great habit um, uh, of if, if a public holiday occurs on a Tuesday or a Thursday, um, they don't bother going to work on the Monday or the Friday. They just extend the weekend. It's called making a bridge, Fari il ponte, build a bridge. So if you say to people, are you going to work on Monday because Tuesday's Liberation Day, they'll say, no, no, Monday's a ponte, Monday's a bridge. Uh, so you, you maybe think that's kind of luxury shy Italians, but I do notice that public holidays, like the bank holiday tomorrow and all bank holidays, they occur on a Monday. So I wonder if it was on a Tuesday, maybe we would do the same. But anyway, it makes a, a long weekend out of a public holiday if it happens to fall on a Tuesday or a Thursday, which is great because you can, uh, you can enjoy it a day. I, I, and this is my memory of one year. Um, we celebrated uh, the, the weekend, but Liberation Day was the Monday. At Liberation Day was the Tuesday, so Monday, effectively, nobody went to work. Um, and a group of us decided we would take a wee trip to the south of Rome. Um, there's a series of little villages around uh, the, the, the hillside and the, the crater of a couple of uh, extinct volcanoes. <laughs> Maybe we should call them dormant volcanoes in the light of St. Vincent in the Caribbean. Um, it's, uh, it, it, the little towns are called things like Marino and Frascati, uh, and Albano and Grotta Ferrata, and if any of those names seem suddenly familiar to you, they're the wine producing area just south of Rome. Frascati is the most famous, but the others do also produce lots of wine too. And it's on the slopes of these uh, extinct volcanoes that the vines grow. Um, and, and we would go there as a, as a kind of spring break uh, holiday day. Uh, a group of us would go up and we would get the wee train that goes up through the vineyards up the side of the hill and then you can walk between each of the towns um, and we were pretending to taste the wine as if we could tell the difference of one village to another but anyway it just was a lovely day, uh, a nice day out and you walked from place to place uh, and you had a, a glass of wine and uh, you'd have a sandwich for your lunch and there, there was a, always a, a train available kind of within an hour's walk uh, and it was, it was a great day out. So the, the little train that goes up the side of the hill, it, it winds its way through olive groves and vineyards, and it, it goes so close to them. If the windows opened, you could literally reach out and touch it. And, and I remember this Monday, I was sitting on the train, and the, the, the Sunday, the day previous, that's the gospel that had been read. I am the vine, and you are the branches. And there I was, I was driving at close range on a train, past lots of vineyards. I had never been that close to a vine before. And I was thinking about what the gospel said and what I was seeing. And what struck me was, there's no difference between the vine and the branches. The vine is the branches. The branches are the vine. So it's not as if you could make a distinction between what was a vine and what was a branch. Some of them are older and browner and thicker, sure. Some of them are thinner and newer and greener, but the vine is all branches, and the branches are all the vine. So when the Lord says, I am the vine and you are the branches, it means that we are supposed to be him. He is supposed to be in us. We are supposed to be so much part of him that when people see us, they see him. We are his presence in the world. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. There's no difference. I can't say the vine ends here, the branches begin here. It's seamless. And of course, that's his point. It's not as if we're a mere adjunct as his disciples. We are his presence in the world. And I'm intrigued by the ending of it. If you remain in me, with me, I remain in you, you will bear much fruit and then you will be my disciples. It doesn't say, if you are my disciples, you will bear much fruit. If you bear much fruit, then you will be my disciples. Well, how are we disciples? By bearing fruit. Being a disciple is like being anything else. It's like being a mum or a dad or an auntie or an uncle or a grandparent or a husband or a wife um, or someone who, who, who works in Aldi or someone who nurses or someone who teaches. The more you do it, the better you get at it. You, you become a good nurse by nursing. You become a good teacher by teaching. You become a good husband by being a husband, by learning on the job. Well, that's what disciples do. They learn on the job. You don't wait till you know how to do it before you try it. It's in trying it and doing it that you become good at it. If you bear fruit, you will be my disciples. So, the vine and the branches, this is us. I am the vine and you are the branches. Well, I can't tell you where the vine ends and the branches begin. I know what I'm called to do, to bear fruit, so that I can be a disciple. And it will be discipling that makes me a better disciple. So for the courage to embrace that to which we are called, for each other and ourselves, we pray today. To make known our needs and prayers, we stand. Grant that the church may hold fast to her Lord, so that all her branches may grow together in faith and service. Cleanse her from all, the hin all that hinders her mission, and purify her to bring forth the good fruit of the gospel. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Purge with your compassionate might the corruption in the world. Where there is abuse of power, where there is selfish exploitation of the weak, where there is hostility between nations, bring healing and a new spirit so that all may live in harmony, rooted in love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that we may be able to abide in Christ and his words may be ab abide in us so that we and all in our community shall be united in him and trust in his strength alone. Let us, work in a, let us in our work and in our recreation use well the gifts we have been given. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the outcasts of the world, those who have been cut off from their families, those who have been rejected by society and lost hope of return. Restore them to the full dignity of their humanity and let them grow into new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Receive the souls of those who, having borne their fruit in this world, have withered and died. May their joy be made perfect in the fellowship of all who have drawn their lives from the eternal vine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs, we remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for the members of our parish community, particularly those joining us on the live stream who are shielding and caring or otherwise have to separate themselves from ordinary everyday life for the time being. Ask the Lord to give them hope and courage, bless them for their generosity. And we pray also for those who care in a more formal setting, those whose profession and task it is, that the Lord will also be with them. Remind them of our appreciation of what they do and of the courage and strength that we wish them to have.
for our children and young people and those who teach them, endeavouring to learn and to grow, endeavouring to preserve the possibilities of their education in testing times, particularly those who approach exams. Lord, will give them wisdom and strength. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who have died recently and we remember those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. Lord God, you call us to grow as your disciples by practicing being disciples. Help us to be so much part of you that when people see us, they see your presence. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by this wonderful exchange have made us partakers of your one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it our own by a worthy way of life. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, but in this Easter season, above all, to praise you most gloriously, for Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. You have given us this Lord Jesus, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and became a labour to the oppressed and to the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and we sing together the hymn of your glory, as with them we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you are seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we now have communion. Bring your Church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, all the bishops, priests, deacons, and the entire holy people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in word and action to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your whole church stand as living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, so that all people may be raised to new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Conval and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Conscious of our social distancing, we offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and grant us
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with these heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm falling out with Mr. Google. First of all, he sometimes doesn't acknowledge your request for Mass and then sometimes doesn't send you your email telling you you have a place. So if you didn't receive yours in the first batch yesterday, but arrived fairly late in the day yesterday evening, I do apologise for that. Seems to be throwing a wally from time to time at me. So, um, the, 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 we got food delivered from the food bank, um, f fresh vegetables, <laughs> which of course arrived on Friday afternoon. The schools were closed and it's a holiday weekend. So um, the chefs had used all they can for, uh, for the meals. So there may be uh, some uh, vegetables uh, as you leave. So if you'd like to take some uh, or take some for a neighbour, you're very welcome. There, there are carrier bags available. We, we're all become like Russian grannies. We carry a plastic carrier bag around with us just in case. Uh, so uh, it was bread last week, but it's, it's, it's vegetables this week. So if you can use them or you know anyone who can, please help yourself. I don't know how, how many are left, but the chefs have used all, all that they could um, to prepare the various dishes for distribution this week. Thanks for being here today. It's lovely, as I say, to greet you in, in, in ever-increasing numbers. Two very welcome sounds at Mass, the cantor singing the psalm and a newborn. Um, you can tell I don't do a 3 a.m. feed, I suppose, can't you? I'm not a dad, but it's lovely to, lovely to hear, hear the, the, the newborn baby. Uh, so congratulations to Jim. Let's ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.